بيشا تو دتري الف وحدة حصار شاريلي اسيريا تي في بفرو سيدي وموزا بناو هاوي اسيريا تي في او قولو حيرو او قولو شاريو دوا You'll do your presentation in English, I think, Dr. Etlal, or in Arabic, or which language? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, in English. In English, okay. Just then my name. I will introduce okay. you very, very sh briefly because, I'm, unfortunately, I, I don't have uh, uh, details of your uh, CV or something like that, but what I have here is that uh, we are glad to have with us uh, Dr. Etlal uh, Salim Hanna. Is Salim or Salim? Salim. Salim Hanna. She is a professor at the College of Education of the University of uh, Baghdad or Al Hamdaniya in Arabic in Iraq. Uh, she is uh, focusing in her research on international geopolitical relationships, along with the situation of Christians as a minority in several countries of the Middle East. Um, this is her field she's going to talk about. Uh, uh, her presentation has the title Identity Conflict and Biblical Prophecies, the Greater Middle East and the Prophecy of the Egyptian Assyrian Israeli Alliance from Isaiah, from the book of Isaiah. Uh, Dr. Itlal, we are happy to have you with us. Uh, you have 20, 25 minutes. Uh, please, uh, when, you, when you want to have the next slide, say just next. Okay? Okay. So Dr. Vega can, can follow up. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ravi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to the uh, scientific uh, conference. Uh, my uh, researcher paper uh, is titled uh, Identity conflict and biblical prophecies, the greater Middle East and the prophets of the Egyptian and Syrian Israel Alliance. Kutashat Hayuyati Unoyatha Kthawetha Madincha Musraya Unoyutha Dawyutha Musraya Ashuraya Sriyaraya Sriyaraya Hoi Tosa. Uh, next, please, uh, Pierre. Okay, thank you. Uh, in our research, we aim to study through the establishment of cooperation and alliance a Middle Eastern regional basis and not on an Arab basis in which Israel absorbed dealing with the uh, prospects for uh, uh, identity conflict and biblical uh, prophecies, the greater Middle East, East and the uh, prophecy of the Egyptian Assyrian Israel alliance. Nishan uh, Bosaya, the Qiyamte, the Adrai, the Oyutha, Ala Issa, uh, uh, Egyptian and Syrian Israel alliance not related to the Arab world. Israel is a very Israel Uh, here we we can see the Middle East. Please uh, uh, next, please. Please next. No, no, third, uh, next. Ah, okay. The Middle East went through, the Middle East went uh, through many sides. In ancient times, it was called the Near East, and from emerged uh, 
the first civilizations starting with the Sumerian, Pharaina, Akkadian, Assyrian, Jewish, Aramic, and Phoenicus kingdoms. In addition to the Greek, Persian, and Berber civilizations, these empires are the structures on which the Middle East was piled. In it, the first government arose in the well known agricultural societies as in Egypt and Mesopotamia since the third million BC. The people of the people of the Middle East have suffered from a series of invasions from a broad subject to them and acquired new idea and institutions that eventually succeeded in a similar of examining the invaders. As a result, a series of states were established head it melted into an crisable that, that brought together several cultural A fusion that reached its peak with the establishment of the Roman Empire. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Prophecy of the Prophet Eshaya. The Middle East region is one of the important strategic regions located in the heart of the world. It contains peoples whose cultures are diverse and where the first civilizations were founded, such as the Assyrian, Caldan, Paran, and Phoenician extra. The effects of which are style advent to this day and from it is the conflict of identities began to reach its peak. They began between Egypt and Assyria over control. When the world at that time prophecies were revealed and documented by the books of the people, especially the book of the prophet Isaiah in the last day of Ashaya, the conflict was between Assyria and Babylon, and the principle of these countries was um, was the power is truth. This book appears and answers questions including this power gave nations truth, and what is the future of the kingdom of David? which Israel is striving to revive. Where is the Assyrian state now? Uh, next. The ancient East and uh, the conflict of the identities. These people were its intentions, empires and kingdoms until, until the Ottoman occupation factors of wickedness began in the later and the hysterian question emerged until the declarations of the mandate and in addition to establishment of the state of Israel which considered Sudan revolutionary event for the Jews and the rest of the region's inhabitants and here the Middle East appeared which include the region Palestinian in a broad Middle East, Middle Eastern Union to be beginning of the departure from the uh, prophecy of the uh, prophet Isaiah. Uh, blessed, uh, blessed are my people, Egypt, and the work of my hands is Assyrian and my in uh, heartiness in Israel to incite uh, specific future days in which the United States of America and Israel will seek to draw a new map for the Middle East. The beginning will be a uh, mixing of the Arab with the uh, different uh, local civilizations uh, to, end con uh, uh, to end the conflict past the uh, co a concept identity self 
determination are uh, passed on each party uh, during the uh, march of the identity of the other party. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. The Middle East, according to the uh, uh, politics and wars, is uh, witnessed, and despite the lack of uh, geographical, cultural, and uh, regional uh, unities, similar to the uh, politically uh, united uh, since the area of uh, the Persian Empire, which was in uh, intense competition with the uh, Byzantine, Byzantine Empire during the region of King Dara. The Assyrian questions appeared and the, uh, it became under British and French occupation until the positions of mandate in uh, night, uh, 1920. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Biblical price, uh, practices and the uh, greater Middle East. The Heber Jewish establishment, a kingdom, they killed the land of uh, Israel with its capital, Ju uh, Jerusalem, uh, during the region of David and the prophet. At the beginning of the 10th century BC, uh, it was later divided. Uh, uh, it was later divided and subjected to envision the Heber developed their religious to uh, revive the Jewish uh, regalos, which uh, greatly influences the Middle East and uh, the West. Large empire and the West, uh, large empire uh, arose uh, the most uh, the most important of which was the Assyrian Empire, which is uh, replaced the uh, Babylonian Empire and uh, re uh, reach and reached the the peak uh, of its power in uh, one thousand thirty hundred fifty BC after the extended the uh, its uh, control over all of uh, Mesopotamia, Egypt, and uh, Syria. However, its uh, rival, the Chaldean status, was uh, able to uh, irrigate uh, its. After that, the region underwent in the role of Persia uh, crisis, who was able to seize control of the Middle East region. After that, the history of the, uh, of the Middle East uh, uh, focuses on the uh, delaying and rise of um, of other countries such as Persia, Greek, Roman, and Arab, all all the way to Ottoman Empire. To the uh, to that the Middle East region remains uh, suffering from uh, political uh, fragmentations. Uh, next. Uh, Uh, talking about the greater Middle uh, East pro uh, project requires us. Uh, I don't see it uh, to answer important questions. Uh, where is the state of Assyria now? In the book of the Kishaya uh, uh, verses were uh, minted about the uh, prophecy of the alliances. Uh, that will come to the uh, to three countries, uh, namely Egypt, Israel, and Syria. In that day, there uh, there will be a, a highway out of Egypt uh, to Assyrian, and the Assyrian uh, shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyrian, and the Egyptian will uh, worship uh, with the Assyrian. In that day, Israel uh, be the third uh, with uh, Egypt and with Assyrian, a blessing in the 
in the midst of the earth. Because Yahweh of uh, Aramis has blessed them, saying, uh, blessed, uh, by, uh, blessed be Egypt by people, Assyrian, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. It prefers, prefers uh, speak, speak, uh, future days. The word son in Hebrew, in Hebrew uh, is the same as the word cross, uh, meaning uh, distractions. The Lord dealt uh, with the uh, cries of invasion of occupation the path of Assyrian will be a following movement for the for the uh, worship of god and the blessing of a new method now used with the hated egyptian and assyrian uh, next uh, slide Uh, talking about the Greater Middle East project uh, require us uh, to answer uh, important question. How did Israel em employ biblical prophecies to uh, achieve the, mid the Middle East in the day? During the period of the Ottoman occupation of the Middle East, we find Herzl uh, mentioned in his uh, diaries about the foundation of the state of Israel uh, resonance uh, that uh, pro promoted him to uh, present his idea of Jewish uh, state saying there must a Middle Eastern um, commonwealth in which the Jewish state will have a leadership role and a leading economic role and will be the center of uh, the center for uh, in with uh, investment scientific research and uh, technical expertise and the establishment of a strong and strong human uh, uh, barrier is sparing the uh, countries of the arab uh, levant from uh, arab uh, maghreb and establishment of uh, forces close to uh, the swiss uh, canal uh, that is an enemy to people of uh, region and uh, friend uh, of the European uh, countries. And from here, Israel began to use uh, the uh, term Middle East. Uh, next. Uh, In the explosion of uh, Father Taudros, Yaqub, the conflict uh, appears uh, clearly and is very similar to the conflict that the Middle East was uh, certainly uh, witnessing, but the area in which the uh, Prophet Ishaya uh, lived was a team of conflict between great powers in the world that began between Egypt and Assyria. Over control of the world at the time and the uh, last day of Asia, the conflict was between Assyria and Babylon. And the uh, principle of these countries was made its right. And, it's, and he presented uh, prophecies about future events. But his primary uh, aim was to announce the thought of God working across time in the past, present and future so the prophet is not afraid to speak blood uh, boldly with kings of uh, with kings or uh, against the nations and the same time it's the uh, it's with the uh, marginalized and the uh, approves it it is uh, as if this book answer question including this power gave nations right what is the role of God in the world and what is the future of the uh, kingdom uh, of David? Uh, next. Thank you. And the, inter, uh, the interpretations of uh, Father Antonius Vickery, I he said, uh, I meet it in a church in Canada with some Iraqis and uh, Syriac 
Syrians fleeing from the uh, terrorist uh, organization ISIS and who uh, took a refugee in Canada. I used to say to them about his uh, verse, uh, blessed is my people, Egypt, my hand is uh, Syrian and my in uh, her tense, uh, is Israel. I explained to them, uh, I, I explained them that the blessing uh, is this verse uh, not belong to Egypt uh, alone, uh, but rather on Assyrian and terrorists of Israel who uh, believed in Christ and that uh, they, they have an important role in uh, revealing uh, the truth of a uh, uh, Antichrist uh, when he appears and that God will uh, establish a strong uh, uh, the church and the most of the Christians uh, had have uh, fled that phase of uh, positions uh, there in fact the questions uh, answer me a question that I have always wondered uh, to myself uh, which is so uh, why did God uh, single out Assyrian to saying the work of my hands. What does mean uh, by Assyrian? It's uh, verse. Assyrian began with the uh, Aramic tribes, uh, some of which were in the land of uh, Mesopotamia and Syria. After that, the empire of Assyrian uh, emerged uh, from it with its capital Nineveh on the Tigris rivers in Iraq. Uh, after the uh, Syriac inherited from uh, uh, from its uh, name uh, Syria, but where is the uh, intended Assyrian now? It was ISIS historic churches, uh, Myers, the Christians, uh, and the rest of Phyllis uh, outside uh, Iraq and Syria. And the work of my hand is Assyrian. God will be uh, sweetness out of the tribe. After all the destruction that ISIS has done, the working hand of Christ uh, will extend and uh, emerge uh, a strong church in Assyria. The work of uh, human hands is scaling, burning and uh, destructions, but the work of God's hands will be uh, will be to create strong living church from these distractions. Uh, next uh, slide, please. No. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we see in this maps um, uh, when the uh, researcher uh, correction look at the maps of uh, the Middle East during the uh, control of ISIS. It's, it became clear to us that the nuclear Iraq, from which the Assyrian and Chaldean civilization emerged, and some uh, Aramic kingdoms and Syria, where the, uh, where the uh, Aramic uh, Phoenix and uh, Naptian kingdom arose, which contained uh, the kingdom of uh, Palmar, which is uh, which is in control of the sky road uh, now since ancient time and uh, in which is came into being uh, returning to remaining and rebuying identity due to the difficulty of Arab governments began able to uh, provide security in addition to the spirit of cooperation which lead to the um, spirit of uh, uh, chaos, uh, killing, and uh, this disappointment uh, leading to more uh, tension, uh, tension in the region that uh, style exercise today. The following map shows the Middle East, uh, specifically that fathers areas of the Islamic State organization read ISIS in Iraq, the Levant, and the other uh, terrorists. Uh, it's controlled in late. Um, 2015. Uh, next, uh, I want to see, uh, next, please, I want to, uh, uh, this, 
this strong uh, thing is the uh, presence of the star of david and um, emblem of the jewish uh, state with the uh, with the uh, uh, babon uh, rose the emblem of assyrian state on the uh, on the lalish temple in sinjar the building is certainly uh, dates uh, back to the area uh, of Assyri uh, of the Assyrian state. Uh, perhaps it's uh, the uh, beginning of establishment uh, and alliance after establishment safe area in the Nineveh. Uh, thank you very much. I thank you very much uh, dr itlal um, we have five six minutes for questions if there are any uh, i remember that i have seen these uh, emblems in uh, lalish so i was wondering what they mean so you gave them a meaning to to be understood even by people who are coming from outside so any questions from the auditorium may I ask you whether you believe that this Assyria in the Bible might be the Assyrians of today or are these just the Arabs and they pray God all of them together might be all of them will become Muslims and pray God together this will be also one possibility or not It's a heretic question, but. Rabbi, put the Merkile Mahua Hamsuras? I didn't get it. So... I don't hear in you. Ah, Salt and Nohel Mumkin, Hal Mumkin and Yakun Al Assyria, Bilat Ashur, Yakunu Sukanuha Al Ashurion Al Yom. أو الآثوريون أم يمكن أن يكون العرب أو العراقيون يسمينهم اليوم والوحدة الدينية أن تكون الإسلام مصر وأشور وإسرائيل مع بعض يعبدون الله واحد بهيكل واحد يعني رابي أخني يعني نبوات إشعيا إشعيا بيا في الكامر مبارك شعبي مصر ممكن إنه آراء تكون نحو الإله الواحد وممكن يعني حسب المعطيات سوري يعني كأنكم جوابه عربي ممكن حسب المعطيات إنه يعني حسب معطيات يحكم شغلة آخر فعلا هناك دعوات لإقامة مناطق آمنة للمسيحيين في الموصل وفي سان نينوى تحديدا why not يعني أراثني لا أثرني لا آدي قي لا لكن هل إنه أخني كسوري إتلن لوبي أشوري قوي حتى دم آثر العالم مراكز صنع القرار لايك اللوبي الصهيوني يعني why not أثر إتلن why not okay تعليم تعليم إتلن يولبونا إتلن ما شاء الله شباب قدرات كفاءات إتلن سواء داخل العراق وخارج العراق بشحيلة بشحيلة كبيرة يعني قيلا أنا برأيي ممكن يبشينا طلب خداوي مخد ميرخ إن شاء الله يا رب هاي بسم ترابا نريد بقارة خينة على منك وخزق لك كما ين أخا خج خيتا شيء نبغ. Thank you very much. So I think we can just immediately continue continue with our next speaker. You should sit here. I think. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful.
I thought it might be easier to think that Egypt is the Egyptians of today, they are Arabs, you know, Iraq as well, and Israel almost as well. So. I have also some prophecies uh, cited here <laughs> from the missionaries, but uh, probably in the uh, Q&A session I will, I will replicate them. Um, so we have, we have still time, we have still yeah, time, she to, has to check. Go to the beginning, please. Mm. So you have to. This is for the internet. Huh. This is for... No, 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 no. Just some minutes, yeah. I, I will try. If you put the slides on. You can do it from. It's below on the right hand side. Yes. Yeah. So this okay. Is, uh, uh, this goes forward. Thank you very much. And, uh, what is the pointer? Is there a pointer? No, the pointer is here in the middle, but you can't show it there. So you have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to. Uh, you have to show it here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. here. I know. Tamam. Okay. So allow me, please, to introduce to you our next uh, speaker. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, Abdul Masih Bar Abraham from uh, Augsburg in Germany. He is from the Mar Afrim Mar Afrim Foundation. Uh, what can you say about uh, uh, Abdul Masih? He is one of the most and maybe longest active uh, uh, Assyrians in, in Germany from the Assyrian movement, from ADO and many other uh, organizations. Uh, he is actually originally not from the field, but as an activist he became one of the best maybe non-professional experts in the issues he are talking about. Um, he is uh, even very productive in writing. So there is maybe no journal since a while in which he did not publish uh, substantial papers, articles uh, about uh, Syriac and Assyrian Christians from Iraq, from Syria, from G in Germany, in the diaspora. So he is uh, really one of the uh, uh, brains of uh, our nation, uh, especially in the, in the diaspora. Uh, and he uh, wrote in academic journals, sometimes more than academicians. So he, he is really very productive in writing and I'm very happy to have him uh, here, but also in many other conferences in which he, uh, in my, even in Germany, in Berlin, when we have conferences be it a SAFO conference, be it a Syriac Studies conference, be it a NRMA conference, but Abdul Masih is really one, became one expert, uh, 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 an auto, autodidact, we say sometimes, uh, to these people who, who, who studied a lot on his own. Uh, the first time he met the field, maybe, it was at my old university in Erlangen. So he was in Erlangen before I went to the University of Erlangen in southern Germany, in Bavaria. Uh, I am talking a little bit longer because we have still a little bit of time. Uh, so Abdul Masih is uh, uh, a foundation, let's say himself, uh, not only working for many foundations, uh, editing texts, uh, correcting, translating for all uh, our people. So thank you very much for this, for this efforts and for this work uh, you are doing and you are, have done. Uh, Abdul Masih, you are going to talk about uh, the missionary activities targeting Assyrians and Syriac churches in the Vilayat of Diyarbakir. Uh, this is of course a very big task. Yeah, that's uh, only a person like you could try to do this because it is uh, a long time and it is a broad geography. Vilayat of Diyarbakir, it's, uh, it was very big. It depends which time, but it was very big. So. Uh, Abdel Masih, uh, we are looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Melfono uh, Brich Safro. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. 
Uh, I am uh, honored, of course, uh, to be here to participate, uh, to, to try to contribute uh, to any aspect uh, of uh, history uh, that we have. Uh, indeed, um, you, as you mentioned, the uh, topic is, is very broad, ge also geographically, so I had really to focus on a little bit on the Arbaker and um, leave out uh, most, most of the other regional areas. Uh, also, from a type point of view, it's, it's, uh, it's a bird, uh, bird's eye uh, fly over, over the topic uh, uh, that we have. So, in, in this, um, as a short outline, uh, after a short introduction, uh, I will be speaking about uh, the Catholic missionaries, the British or Anglican missionaries, and American Protestant missionaries. Of course, there were other missionaries as well, uh, you know, Norwegian, Danian, German, and many others. Uh, we, we, we have, or I had to leave them out, in, at least in this um, uh, outline. So during the <coughs> Ottoman during the Ottoman period, the Arbakir province covered a wide uh, geographical area, including today provinces of uh, Elazığ, Malatya, Mardin, uh, and um, uh, Siyed district, and uh, today's Adiyaman, Siverek, Jailanpinar, as well as some settlements even in, in Syria. So the, the map that we are seeing it shows the extent of the province uh, of the Arbakir. Also, its boundaries changed, of course, also um, uh, over time. During the last phase of the 19th century, the Vilayet of the Arbaka was divided in four Sanjaks, uh, or so-called districts. And uh, one of them, of course, was uh, the center of the city. Uh, so the Arbaka, Lija, Silvan, Derik, Bsheri, and then Mardin Sanjak with Jizra, Midyat, Saur, Nusebin, uh, and Mardin, of course, and uh, Silopi to, to some extent, and uh, Ergani, then we have also uh, Siverek. So for, for a time, the province also included Bitlis. Later reorganization reduced the size of the province, but it remained one of the largest and most important Ottoman provinces. So Diyarbakir was one of the so-called Armenian provinces, a term actually uh, first time used at the Congress uh, of Berlin in 1878. As such, the Arbaka was bordering the provinces of Mamurat al-Aziz uh, uh, since 1879, then Erzurum, Bitlis, Van, Mosul, and uh, Aleppo. So according to Jack Retouré, cited by David Gaunt, prior to World War I, there were about 175 thousand Christians living in the province of Diyarbakir, not in the city, uh, making up more than 35% 30 of the population. And uh, among them, 72,000 Armenians, apostolic and Catholic as well, and about 103,000 Assyrians, uh, Orthodox, Catholic, and Chaldean. The Orthodox population made the majority of those. The Catholics and the Chaldean numbers uh, were given to be around 16 to 17,000. Other center of the Orthodox Church, of course, outside the province of the Arbaka were Aleppo and Mosul. The Church of the East and the Chaldean Church had its center in Mosul, Hakari, and Urmia. So Catholic missions in the Arbaka. The history of the Catholic missionary work in the Ottoman Empire dates back to the middle of the 17th century and began with the Franciscans and the Capuchins missionaries. With the capitulations granted to France, missionaries of the Catholic Church came to the region from the beginning of the 17th century. So Assyrians, so both Jacobites and Nestorians and Armenians who lived here were targeted by the Catholic missionaries. The, activi the activities of the Protestant missions, which we will talk later about, uh, on, started much later and achieved conversion success by establishing educational institutions, hospital, and charitable organizations. So during the Ottoman Empire agreements called capitulations and treaties confirming them were concluded between the High Porte, so the Ottoman uh, um, Padisha, and other Christian states such as France and England by which foreigners residing in the territory of the Ottoman Empire were subjected to laws of their respective 
countries, so-called extraterritoriality. And initially, capitulations covered commercial privilege. Later, they were also extended to provide privilege to converts enrolled as European nationals and thus enjoyed liberation from Ottoman taxes and jurisdiction. So as a result of the work of the Catholic missionaries, the Church of the Syriac tradition, Church of the East and the Syrian Orthodox Church went through a painful split. In any case, these churches, and this is, I think, important aspect, and especially those living in and around the Arbakar, went themselves through division earlier many times, mostly due to succession disputes and patriarchal struggles. To give a few examples, until the end of the 19th century, the Jacobite diocese in Torabdin and its surrounding were separated from the Patriarchate of Mardin. In 1551, the Catholicos Shimon V of the Church of the East died, survived only by one nephew, a boy of eight years. So three of the metropolitans of the church, who were to be his consecrators, rebelled at giving the leadership of the church into an immature hand. So Catholic missionaries who came to the region benefited from such internal uh, disputes. Franciscans and Capuchins missionaries began also their activities in the region of Mardin, Mosul, Diyarbakir as early as 1630 and were particularly influential in Mardin. Their activities resulted in opening a school in Diyarbakir, Urfa and Mardin. In 1667, Father Jean Baptiste de Saint Egnaud founded a mission station in Diyarbakir. In 1670, Baptiste was appointed high priest of the Franciscan missions and was later succeeded by Father Joseph de Rulli. As a result of this missionary work, the Nestorian Archbishop Joseph of Diyarbakir and his congregation were converted to Catholicism in 1672. So other Nestorian cler clergy, of course, reacted critically to this situation and they complained to the missionaries that they were dividing their communities. So the conflict between the two groups lasted for many years. In uh, 1856, Dominican missionaries arrived in the region as well. They opened an educational institution in the Arbaka and provided both language and religious instruction. The school for boys was licensed in, licensed in 1860 and a school for girls were opened in 1882. So France, considering itself as a patron of the Catholics living in the Ottoman lands, opened a consular branch in the Arbaka in 1886 to serve the Catholic missionaries and the new convert community. And Félix Bertrand, who was very knowledgeable in Eastern languages and Islamic world, was appointed chairman uh, here. With regard to the Syrian Orthodox Church, or, uh, there were many contacts and exchanges between the Orthodox Church with the Catholic Church over time. But there is no exact date for the emergence of the Syrian Catholic Church as such. The early organized activities of Catholic missionaries began actually in Aleppo and uh, Mosul. According to Turkish scholar Mehmet Cimşek, the first Catholic missionary activities focusing on the Syriani Kadim Kilisesi and Shein Syrian Church took place mid-16th century, when Moses of Mardin traveled to Rome with the aim to reconcile with Pope Julius III. Ibrahim Özcesar, another Turkish scholar, argues that the earliest contact with the Pope and Catholics goes back to 1548, when the Syriac, Syrian Orthodox Patriarch Ignatius Abdallah sent one of his own priests, actually he is a monk, and thank you to Professor Shabo Talai who provided me with a short uh, paper uh, he recently uh, published, but I, uh, I had not the opportunity to include all uh, the details, the different details uh, in, in my speech, which, which I will do later. So he calls him Musa of Saur, or Moses. He went to Rome with a manuscript of the Syriac Bible for printing. His mission apparently included also negotiation for unity with the Catholic Church. 
in anticipation of the patriarch's arrival. So according to Syriac sources, Musa also took letter of recommendation to give to the Pope. Western sources, however, note that Moses met with the Pope and accepted Catholicism. So the Syriac Bible was printed with the patronage of Ferdinand of the House of Habsburg. It is reported that 1,000 copies of the Syriac version of the New Testament were printed in 1555, and Moses himself received half of which to distribute in the East. It's also reported that in 1552, he made, uh, so Moses made a profession to Catholic faith in his own name and the name of the patriarch. Since then, he was considered Catholic of the West, ex Mesopotamia Catholicus Sacerdus, ex Mesopotamian Catholic priest, also personally faithful to the faith of his fathers. So on March 15, 1556, he was allowed to bear his own coat of arms, a weapon or emblem, it's called, in Vienna. In 1578, uh, Moses is mentioned returning to Rome as a bishop accompanied by the deposed, deposed patriarch Ignatius Nehmetallah. Moses was appointed professor of Syriac at the College of the Neophytes, uh, a Roman Catholic college in Rome, founded in 1577 by Gregory VIII for the education of young men. And this is very much related to what uh, Professor Gonzalez mentioned initially, the interest in the West, uh, in the Eastern uh, languages, especially in, in Syria. So they were trying to pull people and, uh, to, to, uh, in order to teach here in, in, in Europe. So the successor to Patriarch Abdullah, Ignatius Na'matallah, maintained contact with the papacy in subsequent years and sent mess messengers to Pope Pius IV in 1562 and uh, between 62 and 65. But this was met by demands for the patriarch to make explicit declaration of faith. In his dissertation, Robert Kleins actually dedicated a subchapter to this interaction under the nice title Flirtation with the Jacobite, Gregory and Ignatius Ni'matallah. And he says, Na'matallah was elected patriarch in 1557 and served as a Jacobite uh, for the Jacobite church for 20 years. So beginning in 1561, he made overtures to Rome in hopes for a real union between Jacobites and Catholics. In 1578, when he arrived in Rome, he immediately sought out Pope Gregory to formulate a submission, claiming that as the Jacobite patriarch, he and all the Jacobites were ready to submit, but he left out one important part. He was no longer the patriarch of the Jacobites. A bit of information that was fundamental, of course, when it came to furnishing a real union with Rome. Na'matallah was deposed because not all Jacobites were too keen on his sympathies with Rome. The problem within the Jacobite church increased in the following years as between 1597 and 1640, simultaneously the uh, three patriarch claimants existed. Dolabani, Dolabani's Patriklerin Özgeç Mishi, the book uh, uh, Patriklerin Özgeç Mishi is here cited by Özgesar. While at the same time direct relations with Rome ceased, the Orthodox Church leadership had to deal with the activities of the Catholic missionaries based in Aleppo. So Francois Piquet, who was appointed consul of Aleppo in 1652, began to work immediately promising French protection to support all Christians who joined with Rome. So Piquet focused on the Syrian Jacobite as the community most susceptible to missionary activities, seeing them weakened because the problems mentioned above, and thus worked towards influencing them. So finding a Syriac priest named Abdulgal Ahijan, who had accepted Catholicism, Piquet arranged for the Maronite Patriarch to ordain Akijan as a bishop under the name Andrew and pursued official Ottoman channels to have him recognized officially as Syrian Patriarch. This is Akijan. So Osjesar argues that while French sources mention an imperial diploma issued by the Ottoman recognizing this appointment, 
He argues that it seems unlikely because in the 17th century, the Ottoman state had not yet officially acknowledged communities changing their sex. So existing laws did not allow this and Ottoman foreign policy would not accept Orthodox citizens converting to Catholicism and thus entering French patronage. So a Syrian Catholic hierarchy was ultimately established in 1774, however, when the Syrian Orthodox Bishop Mikhail Jarwe converted to the Catholic faith. After the death of the Syrian patri Patriarch Ignatius, uh, George, Mikhail Jarwe was elected Patriarch of the Orthodox Church in 1781 by the majority of the Syrian Orthodox Bishop, but failed to gain recognition from Ottoman rulers who supported the uh, minority appointed anti-patriarch. Nevertheless, in 1783, the Pope re reorganized uh, uh, Jarwe as patriarch and the Syria Catholic Church was established. Interestingly, the actual list of the Syria Catholic patriarchs on Wikipedia, at least Andrew, as, uh, Andrew Akajan uh, as the fir first formerly uh, Catholic Patriarch. So this is a little bit of confusion here. I don't know uh, whether it's official or, yeah? Jarwe was. was, yeah. Yes, then um, Vicky is uh, pro uh, wrong here. So we come to the British or um, Anglican missionaries in the Arbaker. The Protestant missionary who came to the eastern regions of the Asiatic Turkey were of British American origins. They partly worked together to spread Protestantism, but also establish English language over French. So there were contra um, uh, uh, competitions, of course. Initially, they wanted to convert Muslims. As this failed, they turned to the Eastern Christians in the country. So England's activities in the region began when the Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge sent its missionary, William Francis Ainsworth, yeah, to to tour or travel the region in 1838. He wrote a detailed report about his travels. So uh, the published report of his journey, which includes the observations of Anatolia and on Euphrates, uh, Euphrates Basin, uh, is in uh, um, two works. They are titled Travel and Researches in, in, in Asia Minor, Mesopotamia, Chaldea, and Armenia, and Personal Narratives of Euphrates Expedition. Subsequently, in 1842, the Nestorian Patriarch, Mar Shimon XVII Abraham, asked, he asked the Anglican Church to send people to assist in the education of his people. So thus began the active work of the British in the region. The Anglican Church commissioned 1942 George Percy Badger, a missionary of the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, to assist Patriarch Shimon and also establish close relations with the Chaldean Church and, um, uh, and um, the Catholic Church. Badger stayed there for three years. Badger was a priest and scholar of Oriental studies. He is mainly known for his do doctrinal and historical studies about the Church of the East. A well-known study of his is titled The Nestorian and the Rituals, which includes a narrative of the mission to Mesopotamia and Kurdistan, and um, of a late visit to those countries in 1850, including research into the situation of the Syrian Jacobites, Papal Syrians, and Chaldeans. So over the time, the British missionaries established good relation with the Assyrians. The missionary of the Christian Mission Society, uh, Joseph Wolf, on his extended tour and in search for the lost tribes of Israel, visited Assyrian communities living in the region 1823 to 25, distributed Arabic and Turkish Bibles to the clergy and received a handwritten Syriac manuscript. So Wolf himself was knowledgeable also in Arabic and Syriac. The Syriac Bible that he received has, uh, has been then machine reproduced, uh, has been not reproduced up to that point. So um, the Bible that Wolf received then was duplicated by the machine and distributed to, to the Nestorians since 1827. In 18, 
81, Arthur McLean and William Brown were sent to the Archbishop Center, Centerbury Assyrian Mission in, in, uh, in the region. McLean conducted also language study. Brown and, and other, on the other hand became a close friend of, of the patriarch Marshimon Rubel. Uh, in eight, between 1861 and 1903, and lived in the region until his death in 1910. So both McLean and Brown co-authored a well-informed book, Catholicos of the East uh, and His People. The subtitle is Eastern Syrian uh, Christians of Kurdistan and Northern Persia. So the Anglican missioner, mission centers had many activities in the field of education. The first missionary school opened in Urmia, for example, in 1886 as a boys' school. In the same year, a college for the formation of priests was opened in Cochanes. So beginning in 1890, the Bethany Sister Organization began missionary activities uh, among women and children. So we come how, uh, to, to the uh, approachment of the Syriac uh, Orthodox or uh, Jacobites. The Anglican uh, approachment with the Syrian Orthodox Church or Jacobites began when the uh, Syrian Patriarch, Syriac Patriarch Education Society was founded in England, in London. Uh, they sent uh, Oswald Henry Perry from Magdalen College to Deirul Zafaran Monastery in Mardin in 1892 to study and investigate the situation of the Syrian Orthodox Church, which asked for help from the Anglican Church. So similarly to the Church of the East, they were asking for the help of uh, Anglican Church. The Syriac Orthodox Church was headed by Patriarch Ignatius Peter III, Perry was tasked to find out ways to support and improve their situation. So Perry stayed at the monastery for six months and traveled the entire region, explained in his report that education is particularly needed and stressed that the conflicts and differences between the various Syria communities over the centuries should be resolved within the framework of mutual understanding. So his authored book, Six Months in, uh, in a Syrian uh, Monastery, uh, is uh, very well known. The Syrian Orthodox Patriarch Peter IV decided to go to India, so the following Patriarch, basically after Ignatius. Together with the Metropolitan of Jerusalem, Abdullah Satouf Sadedi, Patriarch Peter made his way from Diyarbakir to Istanbul and then via uh, England to India. The reason for the stay in Istanbul is that they asked the Sultan for permission to travel to England. The permission was delayed and granted after about a year. So they arrived in London on August, uh, in August uh, 1874. So there they met with the Queen Victoria, ministers, clergy and Archbishop of Canterbury. We see here on the right hand side, together with the Archbishop, on the right hand, very right is the Patriarch and on the left side uh, for, of the three person is the Bishop. And he was the successor of the Patriarch later on. So at the first meeting with the Queen, the Queen said to the Patriarch, I said, wise man, I see in you the face of our forefather Abraham. She greeted him and asked him about his needs. The patriarch replied that he had some problems in his congregation uh, and wanted therefore to go to India. The second meeting with the queen took place when the patriarch was about to leave um, England. The queen also presented the patriarch with a medal uh, and uh, documents so that he could conveniently conduct his affairs in India. The patriarch said goodbye with great gratitude and set off for India. He sent the printing press that he was given, uh, uh, that, he was, um, that was given to him as a gift to Aleppo to be forwarded to Urfa uh, on his return. Now we come to the um, American missionaries, the Protestant missionary. The missionary organization 
that conducted the most systematic and structured work among missionary organizations in the Ottoman territory was really the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Mission, ABCFM. It established its mission in Turkey based in Constantinople in 1831 and in a short time spread throughout Anatolia with its educational institutions, hospital, churches, charitable activities. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were 444 educational institutions and the number of those, uh, in, of those taught in these schools reached 24,000. In 1830 and 31, ABCFM missionaries Reverend Eli Smith and Reverend Dwight traveled from Istanbul to Ankara, then to Eastern Anatolia and Northern Persia, Tiflisi, Yerevan, Tabriz and Urmia to research the Christian communities in the geographic concern and set priorities for their work. So both missionary, thank you, both missionaries then suggested that centers for the East Assyrians and Armenians should be opened. In 1835, it was decided to establish a missionary center in the triangle consisting mainly of Mosul, Diyarbakir, and Urmia region named as Assyrian Mission. And the rapid expansion in the 50s led to the permanent work uh, in several cities like Sivas, uh, Kharpud, Diyarbakir, Adana, Antab, Urfa, and so on. The target groups of the American missionaries in Diyarbakir and its surrounding were, of course, Armenians and Assyrians, so Nestorians, Chaldeans, Syriac Orthodox. By 1852, the ABCFM had several missions in the region, including the mission to the Greece, to the Jewish, to the Armenians, uh, to a Syrian mission, the Syrian, um, uh, the Assyrian mission uh, in Mosul, the Arbakar, and the mission to Nestorians. So a central business office for all stations in Turkey was established in Constantinople in direct and frequent communication with the home office in Boston in the USA. The Turkish stations were grouped in 1871 into four missions for Western Turkey, Central Turkey, Eastern Turkey, and European Turkey. In accordance with the congregational polity, each station was made largely self-governing, holding on annual meetings and reporting back to Boston. By the late 19th century, Turkey became a dotted mosaic with ABC FM missionary establishment, near which very often secondary location or so-called outstation existed. Midyat, my hometown, for instance, was such an outstation. At each station, there were two or more missionary families, including uh, uh, so that the work and, and American physicians, uh, sometimes unmarried male or female uh, teachers. So we see here the map, uh, the, the mosaic, and uh, we see here also, of course, ages for hospital, C for college, D uh, stands for village school, um, KM stands for capuchin school, so also Catholics uh, are indicated here, Dominicanian mission, DM, and HBO is the uh, archive of the Hilfsbund. This is a German organization. GMA is the Jesuit uh, mission. Uh, so I will be uh, skipping a couple of things, but uh, show uh, only a few statistics. This is from Asiatic Turkey, the development from 1852 to 1880. We see here the number of churches between 82 to 80, uh, um, sorry, 1832 to 1882, uh, increasing from 10 to 108, the number of members, uh, then teachers, helpers, pupils, uh, uh, very, very detailed uh, categories uh, in, uh, in this. The next um, statistic shows basically uh, only for the Eastern Turkey mission, which was in centrally in Kharpud, but Mardin, Midyat, and all the region was, was included in that. And we have also here, it says in Mardin, there were 19 outstations. I said one station was in Midyat, but there were also in Turabdin villages, couple stations uh, as well, and Malfono Shabotella probably know more uh, details uh, about this. So initially, the Protestant mission did not really seem to pursue sectarian approach in the initial 
dealings with other Eastern Christians. They were even seen as a real helper a new friend to the ever-increasing Catholic threats. The Syrian Orthodox was in difficult uh, conditions with the Catholic and sought help and moral from newly arrived Protestants, says uh, Ujjassar. The approach of the Protestants to the Assyrians with the institutions such as hospitals, schools, and so on, instead of direct domination activities, created a feeling of gratitude initially. But over the time, the attitude of the Protestant mission began to change. As a result of this, of course, the mission began to establish also churches. Uh, and, and so the division um, uh, increased. So finally, I'm coming to a few conclusions. We see here, and these are my own conclusions, the arrival of the missionaries, the Syrian churches, Syria Orthodox and the Church of the East, were weakened due to the internal disputes and in dire need of educational institution and educated clergy. So Catholics, Anglicans, and missionaries had different approaches, as we can see. The Catholic, for me, is the top-down approach directly attacking the hierarchy of the uh, churches, uh, structure, and establishing uh, basically uh, uh, competitive uh, structures, of course, then in union with Rome. The Anglican, they came with a consult consultative and educational approach coupled with political interest, of course, in the background, which we can talk later on about. The American missionaries, for me, it's a bottom-up approach, improving more the social educational uh, situation of the people, of course, also resulted then in creating some smaller church. With that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adamotia. Well, I think it is a very good uh, overview about the missionary activities. Um, we, there are many, of course, questions. Uh, maybe we have to uh, go further for more details, but uh, we have already the first one who want to. Can you come a little bit further, but and then loud, please. Okay, Margaret, please. English. I will draw Basima Kada Buyana. Bukhari, in English, English, please. English. Sorry, yes, please. sorry. Yes, my question is, though it was comprehensive information. Thank you very much for which. My question always in my mind has been, why these missionaries, Catholics, Protestant, whoever they were, they came to us with what purpose? We were Christians, if not better than them, in par. What was the policy in Why did they try to destroy us? Yeah. Politically yeah. and nationally and faith too. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think as uh, indicated uh, in, in my speech, the uh, interest, of course, Catholic Church, they had the vision from the earlier on, and it goes really back, I think, to this uh, a famous um, council, right, in v Vienne, in the 13th, 13th century? Uh, yes, 13th, 11th. Yeah, in the 13th century. The interest grew, but also to unite the church. Of course, they were experienced from the crusaders, so they knew that there are Christians in the region and, and so on, and uh, Rome's vision was to unite all the Christians under the papal uh, yeah, uh, organization. So this is for the Catholics. As we have seen, the Anglican really was a different approach. They were invited to come and do consultation and improvement, education on certain levels, church level and also in the civic uh, arena. So we invited them. That is at least what I see. Maybe there are more details. I am sure, as, as Malfono Chabo initially uh, 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 pointed in, in, in the beginning, it's a very broad issue. And we, we have always to narrow down to, to such a question to investigate how the approaches were. And the, the uh, ABCFM uh, organization, of course, they were evangelical. They had also a vision. And they were very devoted and uh, uh, connected to the Bible. Actually, uh, in relation to the previous uh, speech, they had also 
uh, in the literature of the uh, American missionaries, they refer also to the area Mesopotamia as Eden, yeah, the, as, as the Bible describes. And I, I may cite maybe uh, one, um, one text. It says, now our Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and uh, there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye of God for food. In the middle of the garden were the trees life and tree of knowledge and tree of Abel. And this goes further, a river watering the garden flow from Eden. And from there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first was Pishon. It, wind, it winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, and it runs along the east side of Ashur. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So they have the vision, this is Eden, and we have to go there and convert them and bring them through Christianity, because they didn't believe that uh, those Christians uh, practice uh, true Christianity. So the motivations were very different. Yeah, thank you. Well, there is one thing you didn't mention. Uh, we have the so-called Episcopals. When they came, they accepted the Syrian Orthodox Church, at least, and they were talking with the Patriarchate to, for reform. But then the uh, Congregationalists, they were much more okay. uh, well, pushing. Uh, mich yeah, yeah, pushing and, and missionarizing. So, other questions, excuse me, I don't want to. Uh, Samira, please. Uh, thank you for your um, lecture. Um, my question is, uh, why didn't they try to convert the Islamic pe population, peoples, um, but they concentrated themselves or focused uh, themselves on the people who also are Christians? Have you information about this? Oh, why didn't they convert? Uh, they were not, I mean, for, for, uh, first of all, at the beginning, it was, um, as, as even mentioned in our case, for the millets, and of course the biggest millet was the Islam, uh, it was forbidden, yeah? And they had problems, and uh, the same social problems that, that uh, we encounter uh, now in Islamic countries. So it was not accepted. There were many conflicts, and even uh, uh, trying to convert Jewish, it was not successful. So they then devoted themselves to the to the Christian churches. Well, we have some converts from Kurdish people and missionaries, Kurdish missionaries, and so on. So we have some. Yeah. Yes. Other questions. Excuse me. Well, we have still two minutes for the coffee break. Is there uh, is no, no, I would, I would like to ask him something. Oh, please. Uh, what, what happened is, uh, I have come across some uh, document, write-ups, documentation that, that the Catholic uh, side used force on many occasions to convert. First, they bribed the Kocha or the head village, or the priests? I think there were all kinds of bribes and uh, interactions, so it's, it's not everything legally, yeah? uh, it wasn't everything legally done, and really by convincing. Even bishops were bought uh, and bribed, yeah? Yes, yes, That's Bishop true. of Urmi, yeah. Bishop of Ada, yeah. in Urmi, Mariusev, was bribed but, with gold. But other, an, another, if I may add a comment, uh, I think another aspect is that we as um, Assyrians or Syrian Christians consider um, the coming of the missionaries only as a negative aspect of, because we, we have been divided. I think there is the positive side of it which is probably not much investigated because our churches were isolated as probably indicated only in the outline, they were very much isolated and left over, not educated. Otherwise, the patriarchs wouldn't themselves ask the Anglican Church to send people to educate them. So this is, for me, a, a very evident uh, fact. 
So we and and especially the the so missionaries brought also education and all our awareness movement. Actually, Ostrosar had a has a nice paper uh, where he has also um, uh, uh, debated how the reaction was from the churches to this missionary. And one of the reactions, we are talking about awareness movement, Na'um Fayyad, and all this awakening. This is a reaction to the missionary, if we can, we can put it also in this context. Yeah? So uh, instead, instead going to missionary schools, let's open our own schools. Instead of do, yeah? And, and so on. So there is a, a positive reaction to that. And, and I think without the missions, probably we, we would not be in that situation. Yes, I, yeah. I, and, and this is why we have the first schools for girls. Yeah. After the missionaries opened schools for girls, our churches did, did, this, did the same, not in Turabtin. Well, even in Turabtin, we had girls going to schools, uh, and in Urmia as well. So yeah. um, education, it was one of the very important positive effects or reactions to the missionary activities. Well, now we are ready with our time. So thank you very much again, Abdul Masih. Thank you. Thank you for, you, for listening. Talgit Saad. Thank you.